Now, let me end uh, my part of this on a hopeful note, uh, acknowledging that it is indeed possible for organizations to recover well from large-scale ethical crises. To use a business example, consider the massive bribery and corruption scandal that erupted in 2006 with regard to Siemens, the big German-based multinational manufacturing company. This crisis erupted a decade ago, resulting in, at the time, what, what at the time was the largest ever financial fine on a business, $1.6 billion paid in Germany and the United States. This hurt the company through lost business to a significant degree and also loss of reputation. But the recovery from Siemens embedded corruption, while surely not perfect, has gone reasonably well. So consider the wide range of angles from which the problem was addressed, uh, which to some extent uh, mirror some of the things we have talked about here today. First, there were serious consequences for offenders, namely dismissal, recognizing that mild punishments can be worse than none. Importantly, high-level people who were one way or another implicated in the scandal were dismissed and replaced with executives br often brought in from other companies that had strong track records of running ethical businesses. Apart from any practical insight into that task those people might bring, this change was highly visible and symbolized to people inside and outside the company that things were going to change radically. The new management team engaged in the important task of undermining and replacing the narratives that had rationalized corruption in the past, specifically the idea that we need to pay bribes to get the business was replaced with the idea that reliance on bribery to get business was actually undermining attention to product quality and thus hurting the company in the long run. So in effect, the company's strategic goals were reinterpreted so that anti-corruption became an essential part of company strategy due to its presumed link to product quality and thus sales and revenue. These new executives got out in the field and intensively interacted with employees and also with customers, suppliers, and government officials and others to understand what people expected of the company and to understand what the problems were to rebuild trust with everyone and importantly, to make clear to employees that the company was leaving behind its old ways. They also offered amnesty for low-level functionaries on the periphery and observers of the corruption to encourage further discovery of the extent of the problem and to rebuild a climate of trust and cooperation. Accountability in the organization was restructured. Mid-level managers would now be held accountable for, for preventing corruption in their areas of, res of responsibility, something that was entirely new. And new staff and reporting relationships were put in place to encourage uh, ethical business behavior. Uh, they also worked with other businesses to engage in a kind of collective industry-wide action against corruption on the grounds that as long as other people are paying bribes, it's going to be tough for our employees to, refre to refrain from paying bribes because that's what the competitors do. In short, the response to Siemens failure was both formal and informal, substantive and symbolic incorporating talk, listening, and action, and presenting a consistent message across all fronts. <laughs>